All right. Greetings, greetings, family. Good morning, good morning. Grand rising, grand rising, grand rising. All right. Glad to see you all back. Glad for us to be back. Uh, and welcome to the Grand Rise Collective Podcast. Uh, this is one of your co-hosts, Kyle Dixon, with my co-host, my podcaster, co-host, Kyle Bentley. Kyle, what's going on, my brother? What's going on, brother? Thank you for um, for the Grand Rise Collective, brother, the inspiration, as you, as you say. So, uh, um, yeah, thank you. I'm happy to be here. I'm ready to dive into it. How do you want to start? You want to you want to start it out, or you want me to start it out? Uh, well, I, I guess um, we normally would maybe let the uh, crowd decide who starts it out. <laughs> uh, but no, seriously, family. Uh, you know, this topic is a very important topic. This is something that's happened uh, recently within the past week, and it's made a lot of news. I've seen it on many uh, streams, as far as discussion panels and topics online um, uh, men and women have been talking about it in reference of the unfortunate situation with the mother killing her 12 year old son uh, in the city of Chicago. Um, and myself and Kyrie were both educators. We work with the youth, we work in the community. And this was a topic that really, um, really hit home as far as when we talk about mental health and awareness and for those of you all who um, experienced our platform before, you know, Grand Rising Collective is about excellence. It's about pushing us towards our better selves and finding solutions uh, as a community from people who know, uh, people may say experts, uh, but people who've had the experience in the field, in the industry, business, health, medicine, uh, finances, um, uh, education. We've gone the gambit of industries where people Typically, people of color uh, have had these experiences and have solutions to a lot of the issues and problems that we face. And this one was really, really, uh, to be very, very candid, very honest, it was really, it was really sad. It was really sad that uh, this mother uh, ended the life of her son uh, over an SD card, which is if we let the media tell it, right? If we let the media tell it, it was over a card. But myself and Caddy know that it was much, much deeper issue going on. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Kyle. So one of the one of the reasons why I wanted um, to really uh, touch on the topic with my colleague, brother, fellow King Kyle, um, is to really delve into it. Now, we only due to time constraints. We, we can't this can't be a long discussion. So we're going to do our best to just touch on the, the uh, pertinent topics um, as it relates to this particular incident but also as a whole, as it relates to us as a culture. Mm -hmm. So in my studies, what I've done um, over the years and, and being personally affected by uh, this as well and by the grace of God and Heru uh, and the strength of my ancestors, I've been able to make it uh, to an extent with my sound mind, body and soul. Uh, but obviously there's an indication here that not all of us um, have blessed to be able to uh, manage the function, especially what's going on with COVID and the quarantine and relationships and all this other stuff. So, uh, I'm going to do my best uh, really to uh, attempt to give y'all, our family, supporters, or what have you, some some uh, something to think about uh, and something to apply, some tangible to apply to your life, as well as resources that we're going to add uh, to this video in post. Um, resources you go to in case you're going through this struggle. So having said all that, just dive right into it. So Kyle, one of the things that we talked about before, how this relates to the family in this situation in and of itself, um, is what what kind of impact uh, or how this resonates with us as a culture uh, in terms of community, um, but it's not really a community, actually as a neighborhood uh, right. and black culture. Uh, and if you hear me talk about community and you hear me talk about neighborhoods, you know, there's going to be a lot of things that I'm going to want to share, but I can't. But I'm, I'm led and I'm tempted to uh, share this real quick. Um, mm -hmm. When I mention community and neighborhood, it's real pertinent in this case right here, especially in this case with the mother and her son. And the reason why is because we live in neighborhoods. We don't live in communities. Mm -hmm. the, the importance of that detail is that neighborhoods mean we have. Uh, there are people of similar background, similar culture who live in the same vicinity or same right. area. 
but that's not a community. And we throw that word community around like it's nothing, like it's interchangeable or like it's the same as a neighborhood. It's not. The reason why I'm emphasizing that is because in a community, you have those of a similar culture or background, but you also have doctors of your similar culture and background in that same community. You also mm-hmm. have attorneys of your same background, same culture in that same general, general <clears throat> geographical area. You have basically what I'm saying, a support system in that community. And had that support system or community existed where mm-hmm. this young lady was, the outcome could have probably probably a little different. Where she mm-hmm. would have people to bounce ideas off her frustrations and anger. So I just wanted to emphasize that real quick. But let me get into it. Just focus on the issue that comes up whenever we have an issue like this, and that is this, individual accountability among men, women, and as it affects children. Mm -hmm. Whenever we have conversations about, uh, just say, for example, you start out their relationships, you know, men aren't doing what they're supposed to do. Whenever that topic is brought up to men, how come men... uh, and this is just my opinion. We tend to be like, yeah, but what about the women? Right. You know, yeah, I know. I, I don't want to. I don't want to. De- yeah, whatever. Whatever my situation is, or whatever my mistake was, but what about them? Or what about the women? We're not talking about the women. We're talking about your individual actions, how it affects you and those around you, and mm-hmm. taking accountability and responsibility for your individual actions. Let's deal with you first before we deal with anybody else. And the scripture right. says you want to you so focused on casting the moat out of your, your brother's eye, and you're not even concerned and focused on the moat or the situation that's in your own eye. First get the situation, first deal with your situation. Fix your situation up first before you focus on anybody else. And then it's vice versa as well with women. Mm-hmm. And we have this conversation that comes up, big topic, so we can really line it, you know. Really nail home. Kevin Samuels putting women in check or what have you is always here. Yeah, but what about the men? You know, mm-hmm. how come they're not doing this. Was they cheated with that? We're not talking about the men. We're talking about you and your actions and your accountability, just like we're doing with men, women. So I wanted to bring that up and put emphasis on it because this is a situation or issue we need to fix among ourselves and our culture, right? This woman had an issue. This mother had an issue. You know, whatever her issue was, and Kyle, you'll 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 dive into this as well. Mm-hmm. But you know, focused on that issue as opposed to projecting this on anyone else or projecting this in this case to a large degree on her son. Where she said, How come where's the where's the memory card, son, or what have you? Because he didn't answer his memory card, you know, in her head it triggered her to take the action that she did. Right. So I, the one thing I just want to emphasize with that, and I know it's all over the place, it's really because of time constraints. I, re- I can't really dive into it. I like to pick it apart real, real, real. But I just want us to focus on personal accountability and responsibility. Yes, practice fixing ourselves first instead of focusing on everybody else. Just practice as individuals when we're called out for something that we did wrong. Own it. Eat it. Fix it. Don't let the thought process in any way, shape, or mind come into But what about that person? I, that person is the reason why I did this. Or if that person didn't do that, I wouldn't have done this. No, 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 no. You're in control of your own actions. You are responsible for your own actions. Nobody can control you. To, no one can force you to do anything you don't want to do. So just take personal accountability of ourselves in doing that. Now, as I close this out, and then Kyle, please interject on this point. Sure, definitely. I know that's easier said than done. Mm-hmm. I know that. I know to say take accountability of your own actions. Where is I know that's easy to say. We all have heated exchanges. We all get emotionally mm-hmm. upset. You know, mm-hmm. people say, you know, you should have said that. Yeah, but you don't know how I felt at that time. And nine times out of ten, when you're in the same situation, you act the same way. You don't handle it maturely. You don't speak, mm-hmm. you know, professionally or whatever the case be because you're caught up. So I, I know what I said was easier said than done. So what I want to interject with that as it relates to this mother in particular is we don't know what her situation was. I don't know what her situation was. I don't know what she was struggling with. It's like I don't know what any all of us. I only know what I deal with and I know, you know, what I got to go through and 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 uh, fix. So having said that, what I want to propose as I'm trying to contribute to the conversation and the discussion on personal accountability mm-hmm. is for us 
and those who are dealing with trauma, and that's a big topic of trauma, that we don't even know where to start. I want to suggest and 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 uh, strongly strongly suggest that you consider one of these three: either prayer, because prayer does change things. Mm-hmm. If you're in a situation and you don't know what's going on, you're frustrated, and you're reacting out of you know emotion, and you can't control it. Consider prayer. And praying, I know God and you know the, the church has been given a bad name and a bad rep, and justly so. Uh, but consider praying and prayer uh, in development of a personal relationship with your creator. So I guess we can, I think that's more easy to digest when you say creator. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We have all been created. None of us created ourselves. So consider praying to your creator, whoever you term that or whatever that may be, whatever your religion is, Buddha, uh, you know, uh, whatever religion is. Mm-hmm. Like Christianity or whatever case it be, consider prayer on a spiritual realm because we are, whether you believe it or not, spiritual beings. The other thing I want to stress on that in regards to helping uh, with um, taking personal accountability that might be a challenge for many of us because of the trauma that we've been through and we wouldn't know where to start and it's just right. frustrating it's easier said than done. Consider therapy. And Cal and I talk about therapy at length on our discussions and our talks. Yeah, and how and and Kyle is going to probably go more in depth of it. Uh, consider therapy. Now I know that's easier said than done as well. It, it's it's not you just it, therapists aren't dropping out of trees or they're not just around the block and they're not connected. You got to do research. You got to right. got to try out therapists. Not all therapists are right. Right. Not all therapists may be right for you. And right. I know that's another homework assignment or another job. And you're probably tired of work already. You're working nine to five. You're working two and three jobs. You got to raise your children. You got to do. You ain't got time to do research on a therapist. You're just trying to barely make it with the little time that you have. Um, but it's it's a lot to be said for seeking therapy and help with traumas that we've all have experienced on some level growing up that we don't realize that's affecting us today. And I say that as it all ties into the mother. Her name is Fallon Harris, by the way. Her son is Caden Ingram. Uh, mm-hmm. So Harris, who shot her son, Caden, um, sought therapy, but it wasn't enough, and Cal is going to go into it. But if we start tapping in to these resources that we have available to us to help us unpack the trauma that we've been through growing up, it could help us as a community to prevent these issues and situations uh, from happening again and killing ourselves, which the media is already doing a pretty thorough job at the way, and systemic yeah. racism is doing a pretty job. So we need to start taking control and stop allowing them to kill us and start, we need to start taking taking accountability of our mm-hmm. actions we can grow as a community and not only help ourselves, but help, but help society and the world at large. That's my take on it. Sorry for the long winded take on it. But <laughs> <I can't laughs> no, brother. Um, no, brother. Really all, all legit. All legit, what you said, you know, and again, like I say, it's, it's, it's our take on it. And that's why we're talking about it, because we're not talking about it enough. We're not talking about how um, how unfortunately Caden's uh, um, father said on the uh, newsreel, he said that mental illness, mental health is real. It is very, very real. And it's been real, especially in our communities for quite some time. And we're just now getting to a point where we're able to talk about it and not be so maybe vilified for it or, or looked at as crazy. Or look at as uh, something is terribly, terribly wrong with you. When there is something terribly, terribly wrong with you, or, or just wrong with you, um, but you're not being uh, subjected to looking at looked at as lesser than because of it. It's more so. Oh, I acknowledge the hurt in you, and I acknowledge the hurt in myself. So, with therapy and being able to talk about therapy and mental health and mental wellness in our in Black and Brown communities specifically, that is a very important part of the historical context of why we're here in America. You know, like. Where, we, where we're coming from in America, per se, as far as the last 400 odd years. Mm-hmm. Now, there are theories, of course, and there are, and there are actual proof that we were, we were here even pre-slavery, right? They, they're doing archeological uh, digs and finds that, that our presence, people of African descent presence was here pre-slavery. So, but I'll get into that later. But going back to what Kadi was mentioning you all with this uh, sister Fallon Harris and her son, uh, Katie Ingram, 
uh, it's, a, it's a very unfortunate situation. And these situations have happened before. But in the in this time of COVID, things are exacerbated. They're, 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 they're made bigger because we don't have a lot of distractions. And the fact that this mother, uh, uh, unfortunately, ended her son's life over a SD card from the phone, right? When she had just got therapy the day before. She had literally just got therapy the day before. She worked for the city of Chicago. She got therapy the day before and she still acted out in this manner. That tells me that there's some deep pain in this woman. The fact that she killed her son over the SD card. Now, again, the, the news would tell you that it was just the SD card, but we know emotionally that this woman was in another place, a very negative, uh, uh, um, very negative, depressing state in order for her to do this to her son. And they and I heard through certain sources that she shot her son twice. Right. It even mentioned it in the article that I read uh, the, from the Chicago News that she asked him first. He didn't he didn't produce the card for whatever reason. I don't know the reason why she asked, but she asked him. He didn't have it. She shot him. Then she left, went, made a call, supposedly, then came back, asked again and then shot him again. Right. So this is a state of. Uh, 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 of contention. She was known to have um, paranoia fits. She was known to be very paranoid. She had a camera in her house, right? Due to the paranoia, right? Mm -hmm. So when we talk about trauma, it comes in different ways. The fact that this woman was paranoid, what was she paranoid about? Where did that come from, right? Did that come from her youth? Did that come from her adulthood? Where did that, where did that stem from and where did that develop? Because it just didn't come out of the air. And when, when Kylie was talking earlier about neighborhoods versus communities, right? We live in neighborhoods. Communities are about family, right? Families make communities, right? Not individuals, right? Families, because you have the individual, which creates the family, which creates the culture, which creates the society that we live in, right? Families create community, right? And if you even break down the word, community is community, community, right? Togetherness. Right. So with this in incident that happened, this happened in the guys in the, in the context of what we would call community. But where's the community to be able to reach out to this sister to help her with her paranoia? Now, her family did notice her and her family did encourage her to get help. And, I, and, and that makes this case very unique that the help came. But it was it was too too seemed like it was too late as far as the process of her being able to have strategies to deal with her pain and her hurt. And this is what I want to talk about. There's, they said there's three types of trauma. There's acute, chronic, and complex. Acute trauma is something that happens sing, sing, singly, singularly, meaning that it's very sharp. It's like maybe one incident, right? It may be in the moment or maybe recent, right? Chronic means it's happening over time. It's keep it seems like this woman, uh, this sister had chronic trauma, right? And maybe it was acute, maybe something triggered her that day or leading up to that day that was acute, but it seemed like she had chronic trauma. And then you have the complex trauma. So complex things like uh, uh, certain incidents that happen not only over time, but they happen in your environment and they happen internally. So she could have had a, a, a bout of all three, right? So these are things that we need to be talking about more and more. And then again, we're going to her background. Um, uh, Kade, you and I have talked about this again. We're dealing with some of our students and dealing with some of the people that we work with. You know that there's certain things that trigger you, right? It, it could be something I said. It could be how I move. It could be uh, something that we presented in in our in our in our studies, in our workshops, in our classes that will trigger someone. We all know that person in our in our in our uh, family or it, even in our group that they say something like, "What you say?" You know, and they and they just go there. You're like, well, yo, yo, relax, chill. Like, I didn't mean it like that. And they just go there. That's something that has triggered, that has uh, 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 ignited something in them that was already there, mm -hmm. right? It didn't come. It doesn't come from nowhere. You know, they say no, no person is an island, mm -hmm. right? We're all affected by not only our actions but the actions and the and the and the things around us in our environment. Mm -hmm. So the environment. Was she coming from that led to this behavior that ended two lives, right? Her son's life and her life as far as her emotional and mental stability. It's deep, y'all. It really is. I'm glad you you uh, mentioned that because that leads into, uh, and I should have, uh, in the post, we'll, we'll put this up as well, but I'm going to try and show uh, this as well. 
Um, mm -hmm. What Cal is talking about in regards to the traumas, the various traumas, acute, complex. Great job on that, Cal. Yeah, chronic, yeah. And chronic, and chronic trauma. Uh, ties into uh, a, a sub-level um, psychosis, I would say. I don't know if that's the right word. Mm -hmm. But I think we as a culture, I think, I don't know why this happens, but we need to... We need to learn and start now to be aware. We have technology, we have information out now, so it's it's mm -hmm. not as difficult as it was in the past. And what I'm leading to is this quote, quote unquote, title called post-traumatic slave syndrome. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people, you know, uh, I'm not, I don't want to go too far into it, but no, that's real. Post-traumatic slave syndrome is real. Mm -hmm. We're only, I think, how many years removed from? Cattle, chattel slavery in this country, Cal? Uh, legally, uh, 1865. So 18, that's what. So 1965, 85, 95, 2005, 2015. Uh, so roughly like 150 years plus. 150. Yeah, at least 150 years. Uh, yeah. So we're like what 150 years removed. Yeah, and some change, as I say. Yeah. But it's you know, legally. Legal, so but it's Legal. under two hundred years, right? It's under two hundred years. So, so back to that family, it's just been under. We first of all do this. Let's do this comparison with regards to numbers as I go into post traumatic slave syndrome, and this is something that we don't realize. And I think in the in the day the the, the day that we're living in now is so microwave, and we're you know we're so busy, and we're, like you say, Cal, you you addressed it very very adequately in regards to distractions. We're mm -hmm. so easily distracted. That we're not given enough time, and and then just factor in the fact that we're struggling to survive. Yeah, especially now with COVID, and you know we're concerned with rent and trying to make ends meet, and mm -hmm. we don't really have time. It's been set up. Let's get let's get down to it. It's been yeah. systematically set up for us to be like in the rat race and on the run from the time right. we're born to the time we die, which doesn't give us any time whatsoever to self reflect. To, as we say, uh, what what is it called? Self health. Yes, sir. Uh, self -help. Yeah. It's a big deal now, especially with COVID, eating right, dietary, and stuff like that. So we're so preoccupied with surviving that we're not even we don't even have time to really do a self reflection on where we are mentally, and what's going on with us mentally, and why we're doing the things that we're doing mentally, and why we're acting the way we're acting mentally, why we're why we're eating the foods that we're eating that's not good for us, why are we addicted to uh, smoke, you know, smoking cigarettes. Why are we addicted to drugs and alcohol? You know, it's 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 coping mechanisms that we have to an extent uh, divested or invested to just to help us maintain and make it throughout the day, or make it throughout the weekend to go to a job that we can't stand, not realizing that there are psychological. There are psychological things that we're dealing with internally that's causing us to act this way. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that to say how it relates to post-traumatic slave syndrome and slavery. Mm -hmm. So let's get to the numbers. Let's get to mm -hmm. some of the data, facts, and statistics. We're only we're less than 200 years removed from actual chattel slavery. Let's mm -hmm. break this down. That means actually chained, right? Right. On a, on a land picking cotton. Yes, 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 get to it. Right. Yeah. Right. Only 150 years. That means our ancestors that lived 150 years ago were were, were slaves. They were chained. They were picking cotton. Right. Now, slave. Yeah. Slave. Chattel slavery, too. Yes, yes. Emphasize mm -hmm. that. If people mm -hmm. want to use here, but everybody had slaves. Even African had slaves in Africa. We will, we don't got time to get into that, but it's not the right. same thing. It's not the same. That's called indentured servitude right. for a time frame. Whereas you're only allowed, or it's only required that you serve, I think it was somewhere around seven years. Whereas at the end of seven years, you have paid your debt and then you are free to move on and build your life. Right. That's indentured servitude. That's the slavery you're talking about that took place outside of chattel slavery. That's not what happened here in this country. It wasn't indentured servitude for seven years. This was lifetime slavery. But let me let me calm down. Let me bring it back. Let me calm mm -hmm, down. Mm -hmm, but now, Cal, let me let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. How long we're we're, we're under two hundred years removed from slavery that took place in this country? But how long were we enslaved? 
from the time we were brought to this country? How many years was that? Oof, what? Oof. Uh, I mean, right, when you break down the word enslave, you know, again, is that mean physical enslavement, mental enslavement, emotional enslavement? You know what I'm saying? Even, even sometimes, maybe somebody say spiritual enslavement, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. I mean, um, I mean, you got like 1619. I mean, you know, 1619 was when they said the first boat came over uh, in this country in reference of the Europeans uh, enslaving us uh, as Africans uh, to work the system for, you know, to exploit us and our work and our labor uh, to build up America. So, so you say from 1619 mm -hmm. to 19 what? Uh, 1969. <laughs> exactly. You know, like I said, Chris Rock has that famous joke, you know, saying slavery started in 1619, ended 1969. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we're talking about bondage, 1865, right? Like physical bondage, 1865, at reference after the Civil War, right? The Emancipation Proclamation. But when you talk about uh, the remnants of the enslavement period, you're going all the way up to civil rights movement, passing to the Black Power Movement, uh, which is the... Uh, Roughly, you know, 1968, you know, right after Dr. King was assassinated, unfortunately, right after that. And then, of course, it's leading up into now, you know, that the remnants of those things are still occurring, you know. So do me a favor, give me, uh, I should have, forgive me, family, I should have did this numbers. I didn't think we were going to, I didn't think we were going to veer off mm -hmm. this, but it's, well, it's pertinent to the conversation. So you say from the, to, from the time we ended physical slavery, from the time Lincoln, quote unquote, freed the slaves, what year was that? Well, 1865. So we have from, hold on, here we go. I'm doing the numbers. 1865 minus 1691. Mm -hmm. That's the period that, is, that from 1865 to 1960. I don't know if I have my numbers right. I'm mm -hmm. seeing that's 100, 175 years. Hold on, let me do this again. 1865 minus 1691. 174 years. That's 174 years of slavery. I heard we were, I, I, I heard some numbers and we got to do our facts on this. We mm -hmm. were enslaved for 200 and 200 and some odd years. I think that was the number. Mm -hmm. 240, no, remember dad, pop, he said it. 246 yeah. years we were in chattel slavery. Mm -hmm. 246 years. Right. If, my, if, if history serves correct, that's the longest a a a a culture has ever been enslaved in the history of mankind. Hmm. Two hundred sixty-five years, chattel slavery. Right. That's the longest any culture in the history of mankind has ever been enslaved. Two hundred, uh, some around two hundred sixty some odd years. Mm -hmm. Right. And we've only been removed from that physical slavery for less than two hundred years. Yeah. So if you look at that, and I know I, I know the numbers are getting, they can get pretty much, but if you look at that, you have to ask yourself, well, damn, you know, how do you, how do you, I mean, if slavery ended, if chattel slavery ended yesterday, do you really think, and just think about this family, do you really think that you could pick up and just, you know, boom, all of a sudden, oh, act like it never happened? Act like those actions has never happened before. You could just move on like it never existed. Is that real? Is that does that make any sense to any of your family? I don't think so. I'll give one example, then I'm gonna go on to post traumatic slaves as I, as I was going into. Um, if somebody, if you walk, if you're walking into your place of, uh, you say your your job, and you know you have to go through the main doors, and you know now with the main doors, there's security at the front, right? Where you got it, they got to do the security mm -hmm. check. And now you got to do the temperature check. Right now, yeah. You, right? you know, all that other side. So just picture that. So you're walking into the main doors into your office building, they're doing the temperature check. Well, at the same time they're doing the temperature check, the security guard holds off and slaps you right in the face. You're going to be shocked, right? I, I, I'm, I'm trying to make this as plain and simple. You're going to be shocked. Yo, what you doing? Slap me in my face. What's wrong with you? Person say, hey, you know, my bad. I'm sorry, whatever. All right, so then the next day you go to the you go into the same inches, the same thing. The security guard takes your temperature and he slaps you in your face again. Yo, didn't we talk about what are you doing? Whatever you mean the third time, just go to the third time. You go to the third time you go to your job, you walk in the door, 
Security guard, take your temperature. Are uh, you mean to tell me that you're not going to walk in that door with your guard up like, yo, the last two times I walked in this door, you slapped me in my face. Now, I, you know, I don't know what to expect from me. So that's the point I'm trying to make. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, but, but yeah. The point I'm trying to make is cause and effect. Yes. You, you, you develop a certain mindset when you walk into this location and you see that security guard and your 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 guard is up because the previous two times you went to, you got smacked in your face. You don't want to get smacked in your face. So now you want your guard is up. So when you look at post-traumatic slave syndrome and you look at what our culture has been and being castrated and being uh, abused, manipulated mentally, that is going to affect you psychologically. So when we talk about post-traumatic slave syndrome, one of the things that in this book by Dr. Joy DeGruy, mm -hmm. that, yeah, that, we hope that Dr. DeGruy is the, the, the real deal. Dr. Joy DeGruy, she's the real yes. deal. Yes, and, I've met Dr. DeGruy. Yes. Right. And, and again, this is tying into the mother and her reaction in shooting her own son. Mm -hmm. What was she struggling with? What was she dealing with? I am suggesting to you, family, that it's a culmination of what we've experienced over generations to generations that has led and contributed to this mother's trauma as Cal addressed, complex, acute. What was the other one? Chronic. Chronic trauma. These are the things that have contributed to this woman's actions, her trauma, the struggle she was going through. So in this book by Dr. Joy DeGruy, she states PTSD. Now, a lot of us associate PTSD with soldiers in war coming back home from experiencing and witnessing atrocities in another country. Yep, death, right, uh, injuries, you know, gross injuries, uh, lack of lack of food, uh, food and, and, and water, yeah. Right, bombings, right? Uh, uh, they say, you know, with triggers, right, when you hear a certain sound, like when soldiers come back here to the States and a muffler shoots on a, on a car, right? Or they hear a gunshot, they're automatically triggered. They're automatically ducked because of what they experienced in the war that they, they, that they life and death. So these are things that happen that we don't realize psychologically. And some of the things that she put, this is what she talked about. She says the following, all right, list is some conditions which give rise to mental and or emotional traumas that justify diagnosis of PTSD. And here's the list, I'm gonna run through it real quick a serious threat or harm to one's life or physical integrity, a threat or harm to one's children, spouse, or close relative, sudden destruction of one's home or community, seeing another person injured or killed as a result of accident or physical violence, learning mm -hmm. about a serious threat to a relative or a close friend being kidnapped, tortured, or killed, stressor and experience with intense fear, terror, and helplessness, stressor or disorder is considered to be more serious and will last longer when the stressor is of human design. She goes on to say, it is important to note that the manual states that any one of these above stresses is enough to cause PTSD. So what about African slaves? Many slaves did not experience just one of the above stresses. Rather, many experienced all of them. And the great preponderance of slaves were subjected to these traumatic experiences over and over again. And I want to emphasize over and over again. So what I just read was a complex list. One of the things that I want to highlight in the list as it relates to the mother, uh, Miss Fallon Harris and her son, Caden Ingram, former son, Caden Ingram, my heart goes out again to him as I think about that, but the threat or harm to one's children, spouse, or close relative. So family, just think for a minute. Just think for a minute. If you had, what how what kind of frame of mind would you have to be to kill your own offspring? Mm -hmm. To literally kill your own offspring, your own son, your own daughter, over a memory card, over anything in general. Right. No parents who, are, who don't even, who, who will go through the mat for their children. Right. right. The last thing they would ever want to do is threaten their child, let alone with a firearm. So what was she thinking? Right. Come on, family. Let's really just really think about that for a minute. Just really calm down and really think about that. What would a person have to think a mother or a parent have to think to want to kill their own children mm -hmm. when they gave birth to nine months? 
And I'm stressing that because it's got to raise some alarms in our minds in regards to the challenge that we're dealing with psychologically as a culture. We're strong people, no doubt. This isn't mass. We don't have mass blacks and, uh, you know, black women, black children killing their children. Amen. That's true. We don't have Columbine where white kids are going into college and schools killing each other. Fair enough. We don't have that in mass. But this is a culture for us being as strong as we are to deal with what we're dealing with for a mother to kill her own son. Yes. Think about that. Would you kill your own children? If you have for mothers out there, if you have children, would you kill your own daughter? Would you kill your own son? Let alone over a memory card. Just really stop and think about that. So I wanted to emphasize that point. Cal, and then tie it into, as you led into Cal also, how it relates mm-hmm. to the systematic racism that we're experiencing to today. Whereas mm-hmm. you know, we're not in physical change today, right? But we're in mental change because of the system that has been set up to keep us disenfranchised. Mm-hmm. To even a man, a brother, a, a black man wanted to provide for his children and his wife. How embarrassing it is that he can't even make enough money to provide for his family. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not only that, just think about the welfare system where it's been designed to keep the man out the home. Mm-hmm. Right? And, right? And then women too. You got to deal with not feeling protected from your man. Mm-hmm. Not having a man to be able to provide for you. These are the things that we're dealing with only because of the color of your skin. Right. Right. And, it didn't just, right and it didn't just start here, right? So now, right. the fact that what we're dealing with today a hundred and un, less than 200 years removed from actual chattel slavery. We're dealing with these traumas today, just based on the color of our skin. When we walk into a room, just how we looked at, just how we view, because they don't even know it, just because of the color of our skin. And then factor that into the biological chemistry or the biochemical that has been ingrained in ourselves, which I'm going to talk on in the next topic after Cal talked to this point, that has us uh, uh, operating this way. So mm-hmm. I'm saying I'd like to say the PTSD, Dr. Joy DeGruz's book, it's a good. It's worth the investment. It's worth yes, it. Is. Trust me. It's some of the psychological traumas that we deal with as a culture, but in particularly for Miss Fallon Harris and her late son Kanan Ingram to even take it to the extent of killing her own offspring over a memory card. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Kyle. Yeah, no, no need to apologize, brother. This is why we're talking about it because, and that, and I think that's the point too, is that uh, when you said something, it, it, it. It triggered something in me in reference of a memory. Uh, Bob Marley talked about releasing ourselves from mental slavery. You know, this is we, we're dealing with the psychosis and the, and the psychoanalysis. You know, if we want to get technical, of why we do some of the things that we do coming out of the enslavement period, right? So, like you said, we're only we're not even two hundred years removed from that period, but yet we still hold on to some of those traumas and some of those uh, thoughts and ideas about ourselves based out of that period of enslavement being shadow being looked at as subhuman being looked at as three-fifths of a person not even a full person based on the laws of the land right at during that time and when we talk about passing down traumas what they call epigenetics right epigenetics epi meaning the top when you go to the origin of the word epi uh, uh meaning greek meaning on the top and genetics meaning with your genetic code what makes you you what makes me unique what makes you unique and what makes everybody else unique those genetics are passed down and epigenetics talks about not changing the DNA structure, but it changed uh, epigenetics is how the gene functions. So there's certain things that maybe your great, great grandfather, grandmother went through uh, as far as trauma and pain and hurt. It changed the genetics, uh, uh, the way the way the genetic, uh, the genes function in your body. Mm-hmm. So when you hear certain sound or when you when you smell something, or when when you're in a, a state of panic or fear, you react a certain way. And people are like, well, why you act like that? Well, my mother acted that way. And then you find out your mother, why you act that way? Well, your grandmother acted that way. Oh, why does it, why grandma, if you got a chance to ask your grandma, why grandma, why she might tell, she may say, well, I, my mother acted this way because, you know, she was maybe assaulted or, or raped or maybe even she saw killed, right? These are the traumas and the, uh, the brutality of the enslavement period that which we were uh, uh, forced into and had to endure in order to survive. Again, a lot of us are still in survival mode. 
So tying that in into uh, Miss Harris, Miss Fallon Harris, unfortunately what happened, again, we don't know all the details yet, but from what we can uh, come to understand or overstand for what the details that we do have is that apparently she was under a lot of pain and hurt and she felt like she wasn't safe. Some Something in her psyche told her that she was not safe at all. So she was surviving. She wasn't thriving. She wasn't, she was, she, it seemed like she wasn't even fully living. She was surviving. So what in her lifetime through not just her, but through her, her mother, her father, and maybe even her grandparents led to this type of behavior. So when we talk about passing down the traumas, epigenetics, right? Uh, there's this book, uh, I don't have it, uh, but I've been I've been t taking notes from it and uh, from a friend of mine called My Grandmother's Hands by Rims Rimza Mankim. Um, I believe that's a comedic name, I want to say. But um, he was on The Breakfast Club recently and he talked about the passing down of traumas, not only in the mind, but in the body. The body holds those things. Mm -hmm. So sometimes sometimes or, may, or many times, a lot of the ways we react to certain troubles or obstacles or even how we respond to them even in a positive way not are not just your own they're coming from passed down traits of behavior from your environment so you may you, you know it may be something like um uh like like i don't know if anybody remembers the back to the future film but every time this is a good this is a good example every time on back to the future film uh, Marty McFly's character when somebody would challenge him, he said, what are you, chicken? And he said, nobody calls me chicken. Like, he never backed down. And then when you look, when you looked at the Back to the Future 2 and Back to the Future 3, you saw that came from his, like, great-grandfather, great-great-grandfather. He was like, you know, somebody called him Yellow Belly. He's like, you know, Yellow Belly, nobody calls me Yellow Belly. You know, it's like, it's, it's a passed down behavior. So it's like, oh, Marty's acting that way because his great-grandfather acted that way. Great -great -grandfather acting that way. Right? That's a passed down trait. Right. And McFly, that's Irish, you know, but, you know, I can't go into that because I can't say that's Irish trait. But that but that comes from his Irish heritage of his family. You know, what I mean, so, again, these things affect us, even though we're not aware of it. We're not we're, we're not astute to it. But that's what Dr. Joy DeGruy talks about in post-traumatic slavery syndrome. And it's not even post it's post and it's present, mm -hmm. you know, traumatic syndrome, because not only are we dealing with the trauma that we have yet to to be able to unpack, but also dealing with the present day trauma. When we talk about warfare, right? When we talk about post-traumatic, they say, you know, soldiers at war, men and women soldiers at war. We are at war, right? Black folks are at war because we have been assaulted physically, mentally, emotionally, right? Chemically, right? With with, with certain uh, uh, drugs and certain medical experience uh, experiments, um, with um, with certain medical practices or or so-called medical practices. Um, we've dealt with uh, uh, assault on our bodies, you know, with Emmett Till. Uh, we've dealt with in the media uh, being being a dark skinned male growing up. You know, I was, you know, we were, we were seen as ugly or you don't want to get too dark. Right. Let's let's call, let's 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 bring it out. Let's talk about it. Right. Or right. oh, colorism in in in, uh, in black and black American black culture. And it's, it's global. It's really global. But spe specifically speaking in American black culture, the whole thing, I don't want to get too dark. Or I don't want to be maybe be too light, or if I'm light, light, lighter skin, then then I'm looked at as prettier or or more appealing. Mm -hmm. Looking at dark skin, I'm looking at as less appealing, maybe even ugly, mm -hmm. right? I remember someone said something recently, uh, and I'm not going off off, off topic, fam. I'm bringing it right back around. Uh, a brother, I was listening to a brother recently, and he was talking about how Whoopi Goldberg is not ugly, but mm -hmm. society told us that she was ugly. Mm -hmm. so, man, like these things that we have ingrained in our conscious and our subconscious that we walk around with, but because it was taboo to talk about it or to bring it up and people are like, oh, get over it, right? Get over it, get over it, get over it. That's because during the enslavement period, we weren't allowed to have feelings. We weren't allowed to stop and be patient and to think about how we feel about certain things. It was get your ass back to work, mm -hmm. right? You don't have time to think, you're not, a, you're not human. You're, you're, what, 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 what you sad today? So get over it, get to work, mm -hmm. right? Or you, you, you know, you hurt your knee or something like that. Wrap that joint up and you and your family, your children get to work. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? This is the idea of we come from. So put push that in present day America, right? We're going through COVID and yet people are suffering emotionally and mentally. But what's the thing? 
get over it, get back to work. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's the same trope. It's the same actions. And but until you stop and say, hold on, man, get back to work. But I'm not well. I'm not I may be physically in tune, but mentally I'm not well. Just like the sister they 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 said in the news report and other sources uh that I that I've talked to who 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 knew her was saying that when she was at work, she seemed okay. Mm-hmm. She seemed like you know, she was she was functioning normally, quote unquote, normally, right? Air quotes. But then she reacted this way. So apparently something was wrong, right? And again, we're saying this family because we want to humanize this. This is a tragic situation. When a when a when a mother in no matter what ethnicity, no matter what culture, a mother killing a child, that's a tragedy. That's a tragedy. Especially over something like this. Now, now, if the mother was truly protecting herself and she felt in threat, which which apparently she did in her mind, in her psychosis, she felt in threat. But to be, but to, but to, but to uh, uh, end your child's life over something such as trivial as an SD card for a phone, and the child presented you with, as as we know to this point, presented you with no no harm of uh, of, 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 of of physical harm. Mm-hmm. That's a tragedy. Right, mm-hmm. that's something that we need to not keep going. No, no, no. We need to stop, and we need to we need to talk about this. We need to talk about it, and we need to make actions and steps towards this either really eradicating this behavior. Right, and how do we do that? That comes through community. Mm-hmm. Right? And I'm talking about that. It comes through community. It comes through uh, 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 an understanding and an inner what they say, an understanding of the role that we play for each other's well being. Mm-hmm. Very good, Kyle. Uh, and uh, before I go to the uh, next and final point, uh, mm-hmm. I'm thinking, family, listen, you're my, and I, I, I'm guilty of this too, uh, on on some level, on some occasion and occasions. Let, just, just make this abs- let me make this absolutely clear, as Kyle and I are talking about this. This may seem removed from you, all right, as an individual, as a mother with a child or what have you. You may think, you know, that will never be me. Right. I will never do that to my child. You know, I, I don't have any problems that bad that would ever cause me uh, to react this way. Well, let me tell you something. And this is what Kyle just addressed right now. This situation that just took place with this mother and her child, Miss Fallon Harris and son, Caden Ingram. We need to stop and talk about this. We it, we have to talk about this. Now, I know there's a lot of You know, we got social media and YouTube and everybody's talking about everything. But a majority of the conversations, in my opinion, from what I see and and witness on my news feed, I'm not saying my news feed is a central news feed. But we're putting we're if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. But the fact is, based on what I'm observing and you can't deny this to a large extent, the fact is we as a culture are dealing with trauma. Mm -hmm. We are. And the reason why I can say that is because how much money and how much time and how much effort that we're putting into this entertainment bullshit that's on TV, that's in the music, and that's on YouTube, we're investing more time looking at comedy and looking at things that aren't serious because we don't want to deal with what's going on. That's a fact. It's not not sugarcoated. So although you may be able to cope with what's going on now and be able to look at this situation with this mother and her son and brush it off and it is, is, is coming in today and then it's going to be something else tomorrow, we can't afford as a culture to allow that to con- continue. We can't mm-hmm. because the reality of it is, is this. Although right now we family, we all on here together, Kyle, myself, may be fine now. We may be in our right mind now. Mm-hmm. But if we don't come together as a culture and as a community and develop some type of support system, there's going to come a time before we live this life. And I know this for a fact because I've had situations. Let me get a little personal. Mm -hmm. I've already had a situation that if not by the grace of God, because I don't I didn't have I thank God for my brother, Kyle. My ancestors for my brother, Kyle. I thank God for my brother's GK. I thank God for my family. My mm-hmm. cousins, my aunts, and my uncles, because I'm telling you, if they're not here and I didn't have them, and they're people, they're us that are out here who moved to another state who don't have family immediately available, or the case may be. Right. I'm telling you right now, there come, there's going to come a time, or maybe a couple of times, where you're going to face something in this world, real talk, that's going to mess you up mentally, psychologically, and probably put you in the same position as this mother. 
So don't think for a second that this doesn't relate to you on some level. This is why it's important that we have this conversation like Cal is talking about, that we stop and address this and we really talk about this. And why we and Cal are here, because we're trying to give some insight as to what's going on. So God forbid, if that is a situation in your life where you're dealing with something that this mother is dealing with, it's that, that we give you we give you some type of resources to help you get through it that you can come back to this video in and of itself and refer to it to help you get through it so i wanted to emphasize that Kyle, real quick to let the family know okay yeah this is a situation that happened in the news it has nothing to do with anyone directly related to you but i think Kyle, just to give some point on that before i get to the next point you said that this uh this mother and son uh, was known by somebody in your network. You are mute. Someone in my right, someone in my network uh, knew these people uh, intimately. Well, not intimately. They knew them um, in in real time, like personally. They knew them personally. That's what I meant to say. They knew them personally. Uh, the the young son, Caden, and the mother. Right. They knew them. So I'm getting information from not only from the news, but I'm getting information from them as well, their observations. And again, this young man was a uh, uh, Caden. He was not a troublesome child, just like his father mentioned. If you look at the news report online, he was not a troublesome child. You know, he got into his things, but he wasn't a troublesome child. He, there, there was some maybe some issues that he might have some behavioral issues. But now I see because his his mom, the way she is. And also there's some speculation because I know he has an older sister, that there was some contention between the older sister and the mom. So again, there's something going on there with how their mom dealt with uh, her paranoia, uh, supposed paranoia uh, 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 mindset and uh, thinking in reference of raising her children. But again, this is not to vilify her. Uh, this is to try to have an, an understanding of what led her to this behavior. And again, Black folks in this country typically are not allowed to get this privy of talk. But again, I'm not looking for people outside of us to do this. I'm looking for us to do this for ourselves. And people have said hateful things and I get it because, because it is it is something that is very tragic. You know, people have said very hurtful things about her. You know, she, she should be locked up. She should be thrown in jail. And you know, what's wrong with her? She's crazy. You know, she's, you know, uh, you know, she don't need to get out at all. You need to throw the book at her, you know. There's, people have said some 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 very damaging things, and I get it because it's the pain of why would you do that? Why would you go there and take the life of your child? But again, you have to go back and rewind and stop and think and say, okay, not 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 necessarily why did you do that, but what led you to have the mentality to be able to think about even doing that to your son over an SD card? Right. Over something so trivial as an SD card, you can go to Family Dollar or Walmart and probably pay, you know, 10 or 12 dollars for it. what what again in her psychosis led to that type of behavior. Just like we said that what, what was the what they say was the camera that broke uh, what was the straw that broke the camel's back, you know. So what was that? And when we talk about um, struggles and, and, and we talk about uh, how we deal with pressure, they say, you know, pressure makes diamonds or bust pipes. Mm -hmm. Right. But when you already are pressured as a person of color in this country, especially she's a woman, she's a single mother, you know, but it looked like her uh, Caden's father was involved in, in his life, but they weren't living together. Mm -hmm. But again, something in this woman's development was not dealt with or was or was put upon her where she felt like she had to defend herself constantly. Right. And that, again, that goes back to that warfare I'm talking about. We are not allowed as black people to have sympathy for ourselves and each other a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Empathy and sympathy. We're not allowed because, again, it's get back to work. It's get over it. Or, you know, we're strong. Yeah, we're strong. But that go, but but in what way? You can be physically strong, but mentally weak. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, how do we categorize strength? What is strong? Right. What is strong? Right. Define that because if it's defined on physicality, we need assistance with that. 
Definitely, because our diet is crazy. And that's another thing, too. What, what, what are some of the things that she's consuming? Food, drink, media. What is she consuming? Because whatever she's consuming is building up her body, building up her mind, building up her uh, her mentality, mm-hmm. right? As far as how she views the world. Mm-hmm. If she's constantly looking at news and, 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 and she's a, a, a single mother, yo, that news, would, they, would, they, are, they, are, they pump fear, right? Mm-hmm. Some of it is justified to a degree, but the news typically pumps fear. Right. The mass media. OK, so there's a lot of factors that here. Again, time will tell. Time will tell. But this is a tragedy. And as it is a tragedy, we need to discuss it. We need to unpack it. We need to uh, talk about it. We need to commune over it. So these things happen less and less till it's eradicated. Very good, bro. Cal, thank you so much. And again, mm-hmm. to Cal's point, um, is and I, I didn't know this particularly, but since you mentioned it, this is why I think, again, this is another reason why I think this discussion is important. The yes. fact that people are attacking the mother. Right. This is why, this is family. This is why we're having this conversation. Mm-hmm. This is why conversations like this needs to be had more. And with, uh, you know, with Cal's availability and my availability, we're going to have more conversations on serious topics like this as it affects us as a community. Because the fact that people will attack the mother just gives us insight on how disassociated we are to the trauma that's affecting us as a community, as society as a whole. I mm-hmm. mean, those that are affecting Europeans, white people too, Asians people too, Hispanic people too, all that, right? But I don't, I don't have the vantage point of seeing life from their eyes because right. I'm not viewed the same way. Right. I can only give you, and Callan, I can only give you our perspective from how we live this life based on how we've been treated in this country. So I can only give you that vantage point. So with that said, the fact I want to emphasize this again. This is why family and those viewing this video, you need to pay attention to what we're saying here to think about why would you attack that mother? Because all you're doing is you're looking at the action in and of itself by itself. Mm-hmm. How can somebody kill somebody else? Killing somebody else is wrong, granted. But if you stop and think about it and look, a mother killing her son, yeah, surface wise, she killed somebody, that's wrong. But if mm-hmm. you look at the fact that this is a mother killing her own son, not a gang related incident not some mother killing some man or woman killing some man not even a mother killing even a mother killing somebody else's son right, which is all tragic it's all tragic, you it's all tragic. but when you think about a mother killing her own son you got to factor that in you can't it, that's not a simple attack the mother on this there's something seriously wrong with that Mm-hmm. So I think when we come to the point in society, whereas this doesn't happen again, God forbid, mm-hmm. or if it does happen again, there's more thought being put into, okay, what happened? What would lead this woman to kill her own son? I think when we come to an awareness and a consciousness as a society to realize, yo, something is seriously going on here. Mm-hmm. Social ills, society, and trauma is really yo, we definitely do need to put money in therapy. We definitely do need to put funding in schools to address, right. you know. Therapy, having therapists, having counselors. Counselors and therapy and things of like that, because this is something else. So I'm glad you brought that point up, Kyle, uh, in regards to people attacking the mother. I want you to stop and think. If you're overthinking, how could she do this and ready to attack the mother? Put a pause on that. Pump the brakes and think there must be something else going on there that we need to unpack and look at and evaluate. The other thing I want to share, getting back to the initial point before, those who are removed from this situation and don't think it affects you, there's this thing that has been said over the years, Kyle, seven degrees of separation. Mm -hmm. I want you to think about that, family. Seven degrees of separation. And basically the definition says the degree of separation is a measure of social distance between people. You are, we are one degree away from everyone you know, two degrees away from everyone they know, and so on. So just like I didn't know Fallon Harris and her son Caden Ingram 
Guess who I know that didn't know, that knows someone who didn't know them personally? I didn't know, but my colleague Cal knows someone who knew them personally. So if you go back and you know what's this big thing now? Um, what? Uh, 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 it, it traces your heritage now. What's his name? You know they're doing this thing now. Well, we're, we're doing to my dot com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Af African ancestry got ancestry got African ancestry dot com. Yeah, ancestry dot com. African ancestry.com and ancestry.com. We're only a few degrees away from knowing we, that's how close we are to everybody, y'all. Just so you know. So just like oh, I'm about to drop some real quick before I get to this final point. Yeah. Just like Miss Harris had a mental breakdown, so to speak, of was struggling. Mm -hmm. That don't mean that can't happen to you. That's right. Let that settle. The same thing that happened to Phelan Harris can happen to you. You can go through something to trigger that can trick you, trigger you. You've probably gone through it already. Somebody said something. Remember growing up, Cal, do the dozens. Your mama's so fat. Yo, don't talk about my. That was a big deal right there. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, right? yeah. And yeah, well. Right. And and we just find upon we have triggers that take place today. Yeah. Call a woman out her name. Mm-hmm. Bring yeah. one of the trigger words for YouTube or you know, Facebook. Don't don't you know mess with this. But I remember with certain cultures, you call a woman a cunt. Yeah. See if that won't trigger something. Oh yeah. Among us brothers, let a white person call you a nigger. Right. N i g g e r. Right with the with the uh, right with the with the sharp R, you know what I'm saying? Sharp R, sharp R, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm emphasizing this. I'm saying all this to say triggers. Yes. For Miss Fa Miss Harris, the trigger put could have been anything. Memory card was her trigger. Yeah. Had her go and get a gun and shoot her own son. You mm -hmm. have triggers. Somebody say something to you, you want to haul off and knock them right in the mouth. It's not to the degree where you got a gun at the hand and ready to shoot him, but it's still a trigger nonetheless. Get enough triggers. Go through enough trauma in your life. Go through something. Relationship-wise, you gave your all to this guy. You gave your all to this girl. And find out that she's cheating on you or what have you. Trigger. Mm -hmm. A lot of situations with relationships where men have been on, who've been put on skid row because they gave their heart to a woman and she crushed it and, and, vice, and vice versa. These are right. all triggers. These are all trauma-related incidents that affects with you and your personality that can have you act out of character that could damage you for life. This is why we need to be having these conversations and developing this network of support right. to help us not make decisions that can de that can have a detriment to our lives. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So on that, we go to the final point. Thank you, Cal, for this discussion. I mm -hmm. hope it's informed of y'all this is conversations that we need to have serious right. in-depth conversations that we need to have and i'm gonna go into kind of what cal already led to and again yeah. family this is for you to let you know what's going on inside you that you may not be aware of mm -hmm. and it comes down to what's called social sciences y'all so social sciences are important because they create better institutions and systems that affect people's lives every day mm -hmm. Thus, social sciences help people understand how to interact with the social world, how to influence policy, develop networks, increase government accountability, and promote democracy. Family, I want to emphasize this to you and share this with you. Social sciences, as it relates to us as African Americans, have been stripped from, us, have been stripped from our ancestors and are still limited to today. Whereas we have, as our ancestors experienced, have not had the opportunity to influence policy ancestor wise has not had opportunities to develop robust networks we are creating networks but they're not robust networks to the effect that can have an influence on policy at large you can tell that in the election today where we're as a segment as a culture overlooked pretty much because we're not investing in the politicians we don't have lobbyists fighting for our causes up in Washington, just to let you know how robust or lack of robust our networks are. Lack of increase in the government accountability. We as a culture don't have that Im impact 
or influence to hold the government accountable as to the legislation that they're passing that's affecting us as a culture because we haven't developed our communities, which is what I led into in the beginning of this conversation. And then pr the promotion of true democracy. I had to emphasize that true democracy, but I'll leave that there. So cultural norms that include religion, spiritual disciplines, morals, family values, and tradition, right? In-depth study of these sciences along with proper diet will automatically trigger the proper chemical effect from the brain through the central nervous system, tapping into the reversing the condition of the contaminated cell structure that we as a culture currently are experiencing today. Why are we acting the way we're acting? I want to emphasize this that I didn't mention in our meeting before, Cal. Family, I want you to think about it. A lot of us are complaining about this misogynistic music that's in rap videos. Think about it. Why are our women, black women, our sisters, women in general, shaking their behinds, Oh, the big thing now, twerking, the whole big twerking thing. What kind of self-respect do we have as a culture among ourselves as our women? Lauren Hill did that, uh, uh, the miseducation of Lauren Hill. Um, uh, everything is everything. You on mute, Kyle, I can't hear you. Yeah, classic album, classic album. Classic. The video, yeah. If you get a chance, take the everything is everything. But she put the 60s against the, the I think it was the 90s. That, that, yeah, the 90s. That, that split screen. Right. She, the women who were the sisters who were dressed, you know, modestly, um, you know, conservatively or that respectfully compared mm -hmm. to the women now who short shorts are hanging up. You know, I don't want to. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. We, I know. No, we know. Yeah, exactly. Where's our head at? So I, I want to really uh, put this in real quick. Um, and I want us to have the guys got the pants hanging out the, the behinds. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. On both sides, men and yeah, sisters, both sides. Yeah. brothers and sisters. So I want to, yeah. I want to, I want to touch on this. This is a very funny thing, and I want to really dive into it. It's not today, but in another conversation, Kai, as we do, I want us to do a series on this. Oh, for sure. So, we're definitely going to. This is not the only time we're going to talk about this family. Yeah. This is something that that has been permeating through our culture and our communities for a long time because we have yet to fully deal with the ramifications of the enslavement period being exploited, being attacked being um, um, uh, abused, you know, by, you know, society, certain societal norms and standards as, as black folk. This is, you know, this is something that has con is continuously going on. Awesome. So I'm going to, I'm going to bring it back to the root, of course, mm -hmm. and as it relates to the mother and ch killing her son, the biological, mm -hmm. biochemical effects in mm -hmm. our brain and our bodies, I'm going to tie it all in, um, Dave Chappelle did this comedy skit, man, mm -hmm. which is hilarious, right? So there's this pastor that was on his news feed uh, that I saw the other day. And it seems like, and this is not an attack on women, this is not an attack on sisters. Men are just as guilty with their pants hanging off their behind, but I'm, I'm gonna emphasize uh, this thing as it deals with the, uh, 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 what do you call it? The, uh, what do you call it? Um, feminist movement. Mm -hmm. Right. Where women are saying how so women. And here's the argument. Why can't I wear what mm -hmm. I want to wear mm -hmm. and not be um, looked at as a sexual object? Why mm -hmm. can't I wear a tight fitting skirt mm -hmm. and a low cut blouse showing off my cleavage, mm -hmm. showing off my body? Why can't I expect to be able to walk down the block and not get cat caught? Mm -hmm. Right. Why do I have to be look? So what? I want to wear a mini skirt that shows off half my butt, my butt cheeks. Mm -hmm. Right. So what? I should be able to. I should be able to wear that. Okay. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. So men shouldn't be able to call me out my name if I want to wear that. Okay. You're right. I shouldn't be. Here it is. I shouldn't be looked at as a hoe or a slut. Mm -hmm. Or a street walker mm -hmm. because I want to wear this outfit. That's the argument. Mm -hmm. Why that's that is abuse. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the argument. Okay. That's that's the argument you wanna y'all wanna rock with. I'm tying this into why would you even want to wear that in the first place? Mm -hmm. Okay, if that's your argument, cool. Right, that's for right. That's for like I'm I'm wondering, like you know, well, 
what what is the purpose of the outfit? Right. You know, you know, as, as a person. Here's the second part. Would you, if you had a daughter who was three years old, four years old, adolescent, would you allow her to wear the same outfit? Mm -hmm. If it's mm -hmm. okay for you, why is it not okay for your daughter? Right. Is there something wrong with that outfit? Right. That you know, with something wrong. What? What? Where's your stance? And I'm I'm curious to know where's your stance in on that. Mm -hmm. Right. And again, going back, what's the purpose of the outfit? You know, what I'm saying like, why why are you wearing that? Because unfortunately, there's some people like my daughter could wear that, be fine. You know, that's just. You know, I'm just playing. I'm, I'm playing the uh, the contrarian here. You know what I'm saying? Right. Somebody might say, "Well, you know, my, I wear my daughter wears it. So, so what? You know? Right. So right. then it goes back to what's the purpose of the outfit? You know? Um, and, and also, I don't think that's norm though. But I don't think that's right, normal. Right. I think a lot of daughters. No, no, no it's not right. Not right. A lot of mothers would. Like, right. I said, I'm just playing contrarian. I, I I don't do devil's advocate because I'm not the advocate of the devil. But I, I'm playing contrarian, right? I like that. Contrarian. Yeah, playing contrarian. So. Um, yeah, what's the purpose of the outfit? What's the purpose of you going out? Are you going to a job? Are you going to the club? Are you going to a, 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 a friend's gathering? Like, what's the purpose of the outfit? Are you are you acting in a play? You see what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. this is the, when we talk about like looking at things from a certain perspective, but also having the wherewithal to be able to ask us, ask, ask questions, ask pertinent questions uh, to get an understanding. Um, and right, like you're saying, you know, yes, you can wear those things. You know, there's a, there's many things that we can do in this society, but there are also laws. There are also uh, ideas that people walk around with. When you talk about deciding misogyny, misogyny exists. Mm -hmm. Sexism exists. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna wear that outfit, know that most of the people, men in particular, are gonna are walk around with sexist and misogynist ideals in their head. And that's so true. you're triggering, right? You're triggering them by wearing that outfit. And that's not to say you're wrong. It's just to say that those are typically the, going to be the outcomes if you wear that out, outfit in certain environments. That's and, that, the, and that's and that's the point, right? So women, I'm not I'm not attacking you. Uh, how you doing, Mercedes? Yeah, uh, I'm not I'm not attacking you. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I'm tying it into the psychological effect. Correct that we've had over the years that has messed with us as a culture and the respect yes. that we have for ourselves. Yes. yes. Our uh, culture has been under attack. Let's be, let's be very frank. Know. Our culture has been under, under attack many levels as I mentioned before, as you mentioned before. Um, and that's why we're having these platforms for us to be able to discuss it, to be able to unpack it to a certain degree. Now, again, we're not licensed therapists. We're not licensed quote unquote, even counselors per se, but we've had 20 plus years experience in the educational field and as entrepreneurs, to be able to observe, we observe some things, right? We've read some books. We've definitely been to some workshops, gave some workshops, talked to elders, talked to those who, who are, who are, who are uh, licensed counselors and therapists. We've even had them on our show, right? Please check out the episodes, Girls Collective, you know, Kavana uh, Nixon, Eric K. Part, uh, Jacqueline uh, uh, Davis, right? We've had, and we're going to have more. Um, so yeah, so we're, we're, we're developing this family because these are the things that have allowed us to get to the state of being which we are today. Some of it has been, we've endured. Some of it has been great and some of it not so great. Mm -hmm. And we want to be able to also, as we focus on the greatness of us, we always focus on the not so greatness of us and understand why that is still occurring. Thank you, Cal. Mm -hmm. So uh, to tie it off on a little comedy note, a little li mm -hmm. to lighten it up a little, is Dave Chappelle did one of the most exquisite hey. Yeah, the, one of the most exquisite comparisons that I've ever seen in my life, man. Mm -hmm. So people, so he said, okay, so women, you know, dress that, right? So what if, as a man, I dress up in a police uniform mm -hmm. walking down the street? <laughs> yeah. And you as a woman are in a situation and you need help and you come running to me. Mm -hmm. About officer, 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 <laughs> I need your help. And he turns around or the person says, say, wait a minute, <laughs> just because I'm dressed <laughs> as a police officer, <laughs> does that mean, <laughs> does that mean. Classic joke. <laughs> Classic <laughs> joke. So that was just, so women, you know, if, 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 why, why would you automatically assume that because he's wearing that outfit, that's the role he's playing, mm -hmm. right? And not make the comparison that if you're wearing a certain outfit, this is a role that you're playing. You see, when we get down to the, the, the really nitty gritty of it, this is why it's important. Now, having said that, let me say this. This is what ties into the final point that I'm bringing. Mm -hmm. And this is what's called 
human developmental sciences. And I want to give women some insight and men as well in regards to the pants hanging off their back. Or This goes to both genders, male and female. What's happening to us on various levels is what's called a biochemical mm -hmm. or hormonal effect that is produced and recorded in the physical anatomy of the black man and woman through four centuries. And here's the number, Cal. We were talking about mm -hmm. slavery. We talk about yeah. the years, four centuries. Now, how many is how many is a century? A century, if I'm not mistaken, is 100 years. That's right. It is. We've had four centuries of slavery as a culture. Four centuries of not just slavery, not just chattel slavery. Let's break this down. Four centuries of intentional, shocking of our neurological system. Now, many of us growing up in school in this education, in this department of education, in this society, they have done a miserable job in educating us because we've been through an education system that has not taught us our true history for, for a very good reason, for a purpose. Mm -hmm. Exactly, for definitely for a reason. But that does not change the fact that what we've been through four centuries of intentional shocking of our neurological system that has, like how alluded to already earlier, that it can't, it's been passed down from generation to generation to generation. Our ancestors have learned a way to survive under those conditions and mm -hmm. have trained us accordingly mm -hmm. to that pattern that keeps us in a certain state of mind a certain poverty state of mind, a certain lack of confidence state of mind, a certain subservient state of mind. A, and here's the big one, a certain vulnerable state of mind. Yes. Lack of protection for our women, for women in general, vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And our men too. I was getting to that, brother. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, no, because I know, no, I, I, I know you were, but no, I just want to, I just want to interject that thing because, go, right go. because again, we, not you, but in society, you don't say women are vulnerable, men are vulnerable too, men are vulnerable too. I was getting to that, brother, I was, but I want yeah. you to elaborate more. I want you to so, so with the, there, there's a biochemistry. See, people miss that, right? I've, I've heard a like, lot. Oh, get over it, like you said, Cal. Oh, get over it. Like men talk about, yo, it's hard out there. It's hard for me to get a job with that. I talk about this on my other channels and stuff like that. But it's hard out there with having women say, if I made it, you can make it too. You know, <laughs> that whole argument because mm -hmm. there's there's a disconnect there. Right. Family, uh, women, men, there's a disconnect there. Um, it's not as easy as you think. There's a biological chem. There's a a, a bio biochemical hormonal effect that is taking place to us, as I alluded to before, from our ancestors. And it's brought down from generation to generation um, that you have to understand. And I will, I'll take some time to get in more depth to it and mm -hmm. more depth of this. But family, just understand that there's something else going on within our, bio, our biochemical makeup that has been ingrained in why we act the right. way we act. And that's why a lot of women, you don't understand a lot of things, right? You don't understand why men act a certain way. And then mm -hmm. just keep it real. You don't understand why you act a certain way, why certain things attract you that are not good for you, that are not good for us. You don't understand why you just you go with the flow. This is, you know, this is how they say live life, enjoy life, just go with the flow, allow things. Whatever. But you don't realize some of these habits you develop are dysfunctional and it came down from what you've been taught from your parental guidance and from your environment. And that's what you don't realize. And for you to, what they say, Cal, in order for you to fix something, you first have to know it exists. In order for you to attack your enemy, you have to know your en who your enemy is. Mm -hmm. How can you attack your enemy and you don't know who your enemy is? Right. right. How can you fix something going on in you and you don't know what it is? How can you focus your energy on it and you don't know where to focus your energy? 
So part of this discussion that we have in here now that we're trying to unpack in the series as we have these discussions is to highlight that, is to bring that to your attention. So now you have some weapons you can use to make your life better, to help make your decisions better, to help have a better life in the long run. So part of that is the biochemical uh, structure of our bodies that has been passed down through four centuries of slavery and trauma. You didn't realize that. Uh, one uh, Once a certain thought Here's how that transpired. Once a certain thought is repeated in the mind, there is left the chemistry of the individual, a recorded imprint that actually blends into the bonds with the genetic structure of the human cell. This is what I was talking about earlier. And then the final thing, Cal, I'm going to leave it over to you, is just think about it. Cal and I talked about this. Cal was talking about the food you eat. Think about it. The meat that we eat. I'm guilty of it, too. The meat that we eat. The hamburgers. The chicken. I'm going to stick with the cows, right? The cows is the cows are manufactured. The, the hamburger meat will have cows are struggle. That's a struggle meat right there. They're under stress. They're under stress and duress when they're being slaughtered. Mm -hmm. And that stress and duress as they're being slaughtered that affects their mental or or mind or what have you is ingrained in the meat itself. Right in the tissues. Yeah. In the tissue. Cow is going to get probably get more into it right now. <laughs> You know what I mean? So you're eating that struggle. You're eating that stress. You're in, you're consuming it. And as it's in the cells of the meat, as you consume it, it then comes into your cells. And then you take on even more stress, mm -hmm. which is why there's such a high death rate among us culture, black men in particular, because of the amount of stress that we deal with. So not only do we have our own stress, oh, here it is, it's the timeline. Not only do we have the stress that's been ingrained to us from our ancestors from four centuries of slavery. We also have the stress combined from the systemic saver, systemic racism that we experience in this country. And then we compound that or add to that the stress in the food that we eat. Mm -hmm. Go, Cal. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Indeed. No, it's, it's going back to what we consume, right? What are you consuming on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, yearly basis? You know, bodybuilding, your body builds, your body builds to the dynamic of what you're taking in. So if you're taking in junk and you think your body is going to be healthy, that's not that's not sustainable. That's not sustainable at all. You're, you're not thinking clearly. You're not thinking with focus. You're not thinking with purpose because the foods, the drinks, and the media you're consuming is not giving you the nutrients, the vitamins, the, the wherewithal to be able to improve your condition. So if you're eating hot flaming Cheetos every day and you think you're going to build a body up to be healthy, it's not happening, right? Or it's less, very less likely to happen because what you consume, your body actually takes in and becomes part of you, literally. So when we think about how we look at foods, how we look at certain drinks, how we look at certain media, what again, what you consume is what you become. What you consume is what you become. So if you're consuming junk television you have a junk mind if you can jump in junk food you have a junk body right if you're around junk people you're gonna have junk traits junk attitude it's the same thing right so we're just saying be more conscious of what you consume you have control over that even though you feel like you may not you have control you have options to choose better right once you realize again first recognizing that it's a problem and then saying okay if it is a problem, how do I solve the problem or begin to solve the problem? And then that's where the process starts, right? That's where it starts. Awesome, brother. So as we conclude, we're bringing all this information as we talk about, as Cal just so eloquently put in regards to what we consume, whether it's food, whether it's the music we listen to, whether it's the TV we watch. These are all things that have combined itself in an environment where, again, Miss Fallon Harris was raised. These are all the things that she was subjected to, I believe, on some level or another, mm -hmm. obviously, because of what transpired in this event that took place. Mm -hmm. Right. So because she was consumed by all these things, this was the result. And if we stop and think like I brought about and I, I already addressed the seven degrees of separation, we mm -hmm. all have been exposed to this on some level, in some shape, in some form. And if we're not careful and if we don't wake up, and start figuring this joint out and start building together as a community, community, quote unquote, 
where we develop a support system, we can find ourselves in the same situation on some level, in some way, shape, or form as Fallon Harris has had. Yes, challenge ourselves as a family. Yes, challenge ourselves as a unit. Yes, challenge ourselves as a culture to change our frame of reference from just surviving and move it into thriving as we unpack all these things that we're being attacked attacked by. Like Kyle said, we're in a war. We're in a war, a more than, uh, I would say more over a psychological war that's mm-hmm. seeing us not only via what, again, what we listen to. That's why the Bible says, guard your eye gates and your ear gates. That's why we have two eyes and two ears and one mouth to observe more and talk less. Yes, observe what's going on around us. Yes, use the resources that we have available to us as mm-hmm. we just get in this discussion. We're going to be more, we're going to get more in depth. We're going to provide more resources. We're going to get more effective at this, y'all. So you better stay tuned because we're going to be dropping some jewels. We're going to be dropping some gems that's going to change your life. That's going to help your life succeed and thrive like we're succeeding and driving. Uh, exactly. It's changed our lives. That's why we're able to share it with you. It's changed. It's, it has changed and it's changing our lives. So we're able to share that with you all as a community. Awesome. So this is this is the things that she dealt with that we're bringing out to y'all so that way y'all can unpack and, and use and apply tangible form. Uh, but I thought, thank you, Cal, but I thought this was very important to have this conversation on this event that took place because it was traumatic. Even though it doesn't direct you, even though it hasn't affected you directly, it affects us as a community. And I think we need to have some ser- we have we need more serious conversations like this. Mm-hmm. We need more um, platforms that can discuss these real issues and provide and contribute to the discussion and bring in tangible resources and just internal makeup and psychology things that help us deal with our own mind. You know, and that definitely ties into therapy, therapists, support systems to help us fight off situations like this. So we don't have another Fallon Harris and another Caden Ingram that affects our community. God forbid any other community. Uh, But because we're coming from this perspective, this is our perspective, our experience, especially among our community. We make sure that we we develop and build more healthy uh, uh, environments and and just more uh, a healthy society. So that's, those are pretty much my final words, Kyle. And again, thank you uh, for um, joining this conversation and having this conversation and, and talking about this sensitive and important topic. Indeed. The, and family, thank you for uh, hanging with us. Thank you for rocking with us, uh, listening this morning, because again, you know, this is a very important conversation that we need to have amongst ourselves and take a, take a pause for the cause, as they say, you know, and really take a long pause for the cause to be able to deal with our issues uh, respectfully. And again, it's, it's, you, you know, you're, you're seen as one way, but then how you feel it may be another way. And w- one, one of the quotes I got from one of my um, Jagna's counselors, mentors, what you feel is real, but is it true? Okay. What you feel is definitely real because it's real to you, but is it actually true? So these are the kind of questions that when you're around the right people in the right environment, in a community, these things will not only help to be answered, but they'll be done on a collective, uh, on a a collective environment where you're supported, where we we support each other. And that's what we are doing here at Grand Rise Collective is creating this community, whether it be online and offline, to be able to have these discussions respectfully and also grow from these particular, uh, not just tragic events, but also glorious and uh, celebratory events too. So this is a start in that direction. This is a progression in that direction. And I wanna do a call to action for anyone who's going through any trauma or traumatic events, definitely uh, uh, send us your email or uh, 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 get at us on Instagram, send us a message in Facebook, Facebook chat, Facebook messenger, and then we can direct you to some resources, right? We have a number of resources that you, who, people you can reach out to, organizations you can reach out to, and help to, in order for you to help deal with some of your trauma, traumatic, and uh, discouraging events, right? A weak person is a person that doesn't ask for help, right? That is a weak person. Again, they're not with us, and I'm not, I'm not degrading them as far as weak, but that is a weakness that that you don't ask for help. Because as people, we're told not to ask for help because sometimes our help has been exploited or people have exploited us because we needed help. But a weak person does not ask for help. A strong person asks for help. 
You think LeBron, Michael Jordan, Oprah Winfrey, uh, Robert Smith, um, Fannie Lou Hamer, uh, uh, Martin Luther King, uh, Mega Evers, all these different people. You didn't think they asked for help? That's what made them strong. They couldn't do it alone, right? So get out of that 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 misinformation of you don't need help. You know, I don't need help. I do it myself. Yeah, you can do it yourself, but you need help. No one gets there alone. Okay. Thank you. I have one. I want to ask one question. I'm, I'm thinking some members, some family, uh, some supporters, subscribers may have this question. Now you said what you feel is real, but it's not. But it might not be true. Uh, real quick, if you can, real quick. I, you say, for example, I, what I, so you're trying to tell me what I feel isn't true. I'm feeling mm-hmm. it. How is it not true? Can right. You, if you Y'all, definitely. Oh, sure. Definitely. On that? Just like in the situation, unfortunately, from what we know with uh, with Fallon Harris and her son, uh, Katie Ingram, what she was feeling was real to her, her paranoia. But in the situation, as far as we know it, there was no true danger. There was no true danger in her environment. What she felt, she felt like it was. But in her environment, it was not true. Thank you. Perfect. That's it, y'all. Thank you for joining. Uh, Stay tuned. We got some more coming on that. One, two, three. Peace. Peace. Awesome.